Hi, in this video, I'm going to show you how to combine tables together when there are some header information that are all over the place in terms of rows. They're all in different rows. So stick around and check it out. Here's our table, and this is the first worksheet here where we're going to get all this information and combine it with other similar sheets here. This one's for California. You can see that this is in row six and seven. That's header row information we want to put over here. Sheet two, it's in a different place, different rows. This is row two and three. Sheet four, it's in row one and two. And sheet four, I mean sheet three, and in sheet four, it's kind of in rows two and three, but you've got other information here in these other rows. How do we do this to make it look like this? And this is where we would got all the information, all the records in one table and we have a state header here and the state records there. Now, with a small data set that I showed earlier, that's not too hard to do because all you need to do is just copy and paste it. It doesn't take too much time. But what if instead of having four sheets here, we had 10 sheets, 20 sheets, 30 sheets, and they had similar table format at the bottom, but we needed some information to be pulled in from some other rows. That would be pretty difficult unless you had Power Query. So let's see how we can do this with Power Query. I'm in a blank sheet here. I'll go to Data, Get Data from File, and I'll browse for that workbook. Here I'm going to open up my file. Double click to open it up, and the navigation window is going to come up. And you can see that the sheets, those four sheets show up here, sheet one, two, three, and four. I'll bring in the folder or the workbook for that, go to Transform Data, and the Power Query editor will come up and this is where we're going to do most of our transformation. Here we go to data and I only need this particular column. Right click, remove other columns and you can see that it still shows my data in here. I'm going to have to put a index column account for each of these tables. To do that we go to add columns, custom column. I'll just give this a title, table, indexes, or just the index is fine. And I'll use some M code here. We use table, table dot add index column, open parentheses. Our table, we want that, comma, the new column name, we'll just call it index. And then another comma. We want to start at zero and then increment by ones, or increment by ones. Close parentheses, click OK, and now we have our table index, a new header over there. If I click into the blank here, you can see that it's copied that table, but added additional index columns. Zero, move this up here. Zero, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. So this gives us some data that we can use in our other steps. So after we do this one, we need to pull out the California here. The way we're going to put out state information here is going to be similar to this. So let's see how we do that. First, I need to find the state header information here. And we're going to use another M code and go to Add Column, Custom Column. We'll call this one State ID. And here, we're going to use something called List.Position position of. And this is almost like a search. It searches for a value. Open parentheses. We want to search in this table, in this table, data, this column, data, and we want to search in the first column. Now I know that I have this selected, so it's showing you the index, but basically this data is just these first four columns. And that's that first column that we want to reference. So we'll reference it by open square brackets, column one, because that's the first column, that's the name of that column. Column one, close square brackets, and now we have the value. The value that we want to find is state. Type in state, and then we're close parentheses, click OK. Now it's going to give us the location of where it is. So this is in the location number five, the fifth row in Power Query. Row numbers start with zero. So this is going to be the sixth row, but row ID number five. If we went to our table here and count it, it would be zero, one, two, three, four, five. That's where the state information comes from. Now we're going to use this to help us get 
that the value out of the sixth row. And the way that we can do that is we're going to add another column. So we added a column here, and this one we can call state. I'll just call this one state. So here we're going to pull out that information. So we're going to again reference data. Double click that. And in the first column, we want to get the value out of the first column. Colon, column number one, close, square brackets. And now we want to get the row number. So that row number for the state, that name, they're all going to be the same for sheet number one, sheet two, sheet, sheet three, sheet four. It's going to have that state header. And to get that row, we're going to have to use open curly brackets and reference the row ID here. And we'll reference that state ID row number. And we can click on the column here, plus one, because we want to have row number five in, for example, California, this is zero, one, two, three, four, five, plus one would give us six, which is that row. So we want that value there. Close parentheses, click OK, and now we have our state information, right? So that first table is California, the second Virginia, third Maryland, fourth Florida. So that gives us the state information that we can use later on, and we can put that into our final table. But we're not done because we need to get all those tables after a full name, bring this up a little bit, all them together, right? We have full name here, we got full name there, we got full name here, etc. So how do we pull that in? Well, we're going to do something similar to what we did with the position, the list.position of, and get that full name ID. Go to add column, custom column, and here we'll get, which I'll just call this full name because this is what we're taking out of there. List dot position of, and we're going to look for, we're going to look in data again, in column one, we're going to look for the value full name. We want to look for that value full name and have it bring us back the position number of that row. Quotes, full name, close parentheses, press enter. Well, uh, no enter needed. Just click OK. And we have at and row or position number nine of the table, right? Zero, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Let's go for something short of that last one. Five. Zero, one, two, three, four, five. So we have that value there. So the next thing we want to do later on is anything above that. We don't need that anymore because we already got our state information here in this particular step. We just need the full name and that all the contents of those records down below. So anything above that disappears. How do we do that? Well, we have our index here earlier, so we can use that. You can see here that full name here is number nine, and it corresponds to number nine here. The same with Virginia. Full name here, whoops, let me go into this one. Virginia, the, f the full name is number six. That's that's the index there, and it's number six here. So we can put an if-then statement for that. First, we need to get rid of all the ones that we don't need anymore, the, the columns we don't need anymore. We'll keep this one, we'll keep this one, and that one. Right-click, remove other columns, and expand this column. Click on the two headed arrows, click OK. So now we have an opportunity to do comparison. Anything that is nine and above, we don't need those rows anymore. Let me click here to get out of that. And anything here for Virginia, anything six and above, we don't need those anymore, right? So I can just add an if statement, add a conditional column. Go to add column, conditional column. Here, I'll select for my column name, if this column, table index index, if that is greater than or equal to the value in this column, full name, then one, I'll keep it. Yes, I'll keep it. If not, null or zero. Click OK. And here we see that we have our null values. Nine is equal to nine here. It gives me that column where it says full name. The same thing with where Virginia starts here with that, that name, row uh, 23 here. If I scroll across, you can see that they match six and six as one. 
So all I need to do is keep my ones. Click OK. The first row I'm going to use as headers because they have the header information that I need. Go to home, use first row as headers, and we have full name, email, department, gender. Great. I need to get rid of the other rows that have the header, so click on this drop down and uncheck that full name there. Click OK. And I don't need some of these columns anymore, so just keep the columns that I want. Click on that, press Control. Email I'll keep, department I'll keep, gender I'll keep, California I'll keep here, but I'm going to change that later on. Right click, remove other columns. Here I'll just type this one as state and delete California from there. Press enter and I've got all my values here. Go to click close and load and it's going to load it into the table here with all my information. So here we have the end table that I needed. Previously, I had a field here, or a set of information here, that I needed to turn into a column, its own column, but they're all in separate rows. And it would seem at first that it would be hard to put them into a, a row here, or a column here. But with some Power Query and a little bit of M code, you can actually do it fairly easily. Now, as I mentioned before, this is only four worksheets. Not too hard to cut and copy and paste. But if you had 10, 20, 30 worksheets, that would take a lot of time. And Power Query makes it so much more easy. So I hope this helps. Thanks for watching.